Everyone to Con Expo. Uh, I know you probably have uh, done a few press conferences already today, so we'll try to not bore you with a whole lot of PowerPoint slides, and hopefully what we have to share with you is, is of interest. And, and uh, I want to welcome my friend and, and colleague, Mr. Jason Hallett, is with us. And uh, I'm Mark Contino. I'm the Vice President of our North American Retail Operation, Tropicon Solutions. And it's our pleasure today to give you kind of an idea of uh, what we're going to share here at Con Expo. And I thought maybe we'd start with a little memory lane. Uh, some of us in the room have been to many Con Expos and earned this gray hair. And when you look at Con Expo, because it's every three years, you know how some people say when you, when you don't see someone often, you see changes within you might not see when you see them every day. And I think that's the way Con Expo is. Because it's every three years here in North America, that we, we see our customers in those three-year snapshots. And I, I like to think that every Con Expo has kind of an underlying message or theme that doesn't come from, from us as an as a, as a, as a exhibitor or our marketing efforts that we do, but it comes from the customer. It comes from the customer that's walking in and they're, they maybe now have had three years and they've, they've thought about their business differently or they've thought about how they can be more efficient and, and, and do a better job and, and be more profitable. So, uh, way back in 2002, the message was kind of like, 3D automation was brand new. It only had been out for a couple of years. And wow, I can now grade a site without grade stakes. And I can eliminate the stakes. And I, I can start there. And there really was only a couple of players in that market. It was Top Gun and Trimble. Today, you see automation on almost every heavy equipment booth. Lots of other players in that market has come a long way. 2008, we, we flash forward. Even though that we launched uh, dual constellation capability in our products in 2001, by 2008, it started to become real to the customers. They started to say, oh, wait a minute, I can combine two satellite systems to give me more satellites overhead. By the time we jumped to 2017, what we really saw was market expansion. And what I mean by that is just the smaller and smaller contractors were adopting technology and the market was expanding. We were having people come into our exhibit saying, I can't wait any longer. I have to, if I'm gonna compete with the bigger contractors, I have to have this technology. So six years later, after COVID behind us, what do we see this year, 2023? Again, the show hasn't started yet. So this is really, this is Mark's guess, okay? And really, I like to call it the digitalization of construction. It's gonna be the theme. And it's not about necessarily just the technology piece. It's how that technology piece connects with everything else. How does it connect to my ERP system? How does it connect to my scheduling? How does it, what part does it play? I wanna know where every piece of equipment is at all times. I want that equipment reporting back to me. It's information. How does it help me schedule better? How does it help me deploy my fleet better? So I can save on emissions, I can save on, on, uh, on efficiency. So it's not just about the technology. And I've I worked for Top Gun, we're a technology company, right? But we have to now make our technology work with other third-party systems. We, there's no one that can make the whole construction site or all the pieces that go in the whole construction site. So we have to work together. We have to be able to integrate and, and, and bring those pieces together. Another uh, thing that we saw starting three years ago, uh, just before COVID hit, was the vast expansion, as we talk about the expansion of the marketplace, uh, uh, the smaller machines, and how many contractors that are using these small machines to do a lot of work, and they want them automated. Right, and, but they can't. They, they can't put an automation system on a on a small machine that costs more than the machine costs. So as a manufacturer, we had to drive cost out of those solutions. So we launched a, a few years ago our optical system using our LN150. That's the little yellow thing that looks like a laser. Uh, we like to call it a 3D laser because it, it, it auto levels itself like a 
standard rotating laser does, but then it gives us 3D uh, telemetry data uh, off, off the prism mounted on the machine. So this year we've added to that, we've added our GPS system. So now if a, a small machine can actually be run either with an optical piece, which requires that line of sight now on a site, but works better if I'm in an urban canyon or if I'm in a lot of tree covered areas, stuff like that, or I'm working underground or you know that, that kind of application. But when I'm out in the open, I want to put a GPS system on that. And we connect that GPS system now. A lot of those GPS systems in the old days, we used to have the base station, right? That had to be set up on the site. Now we can connect that GPS system by connecting in to a cellular network and tapping into a correction service, our top net correction service. So now the customer only has to buy what's on the machine and they turn, they, they turn it on in the morning, it goes out, finds it, connects via cellular to uh, our connection service and they're up and running. They don't have to set up a base station or if they're in an area where the fact of the base station might be an issue for them, they don't have to set that up. So the MC Mobile, uh, fantastic product for us. It's been well uh, re received in the marketplace and now we're excited to add the GPS position to that. But across all of our machine control applications, and going back to the digitalization and the connectivity, I still want to be walking around. I don't want to be behind the phone. Um, but the, I'm loud enough. I can walk. You guys can hear me, right? I got a big mouth. At least that's what my mother always used to tell me. Um, but the MC Mobile platform, our MCX new platform, is across all of our product portfolio, can go on any kind of machine. And it's designed to be smaller and lighter more powerful as, as everything, you know, now our cell phones could do almost anything, right? And so our MCX platform can go to any kind of machine, whether it's a, a, a bulldozer, an excavator, grader, uh, whatever happens to be, it can, it can automatically sense when it's plugged in so the, uh, the customer can actually take it and move it from machine to machine, leaving a, maybe a display only in the machine. Bring the, 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 the hardware platform, the MCX hardware piece, when it plugs into the machine, it automatically can sense from the machine what kind of machine it is, make the setting changes that need to be set. So I need to configure myself for an excavator instead of a bulldozer, right? And so very powerful. Uh, we've got 10 times the storage capability for, for very large projects where the huge project, sometimes you had to break the project down into segments to load it into the machines because of lag time, right? You didn't want that computer fighting over, over all that huge file to, to do a, a section that's, that I was uh, operating locally. So now we've got like a 10 times uh, power there. We've got all types of satellites, all constellations from not just the GPS and GLONASS that we had back in the day, but the Baidu satellites and, and uh, all, the, all the new ones and capability to, to adapt to new constellations of the future when they come built into the unit. Um, there's no hardware upgrades to go from different machines, it's all the same. Uh, so very powerful tool, and again, back to that connectivity where we can, we can put that on all multiple sh machines, it's smart enough to know what it's doing, it can connect via radios, both UHF and spread spectrum, it can connect via cellular, uh, so lots of connectivity and, and really the future of where we're trying to take the machine control business. But the real goal, and some of you may have seen this slide, it's my favorite slide that I, I put in the slide deck. Uh, and because it tells the story that we're, that we're always uh, aspiring to, right? We're not there yet, uh, but we're aspiring to this complete digital connectivity. So from the, the left-hand side of the slide where it's the raw ground and we're just out surveying that and, and finding out what's there to when we start moving material, we're finishing material, we're, we're inspecting, maybe we're putting a road in, and then finally to what was built and then the as-built and the life of that building throughout its life cycle. And sharing that data, tying together the BIM for the, for the building with BIM for the field, you know, we can't just skip over and go from design to build. Because you go design, then you go to dirt. Then you, then you go to build. So, but it's gotta, they gotta connect. And they gotta be able to connect, like I said before, to third party, fourth, you know, fourth party. Because Topcon can't make all the software, or even a big, big uh, 
partner of ours, Autodesk, can't make all the pieces of software. So what we need to do is connect with the right players. And every contractor that wants to be different can be, because they can pick the tools for them. Now, I get really passionate about this, but my friend to my, my left over here has is, is been doing this his whole career with TopCon. Uh, a lot of initiatives. Like I said, I thank Stacy for our earlier pictures there, Jason. They were like 20 years old, I think. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, but I'm going to hand over because this is really uh, Jason's uh, neighborhood to, to talk about. So, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It is actually exciting to see everyone because it's three years now since I've been up on this stage. And I can remember it was actually the 13th that I was flying home from Con Expo, freaking out whether or not I was going to get a flight out of here. A lot of us were probably in that same boat. So really great to see everyone. Thank you for coming and joining us. You know, Mark's bringing up connectivity over and over and over when he's talking. And one of the reasons is it's, it is not just connecting the sensors and the tools that, that TopCon makes in the field, uh, say, to a, to a machine, you know, or, or a surveyor or somebody like that. It's also connecting to the things that those tools need to eventually become autonomous, right? There's a road to autonomy that everybody's on. And TopCon makes certain pieces uh, for the equipment to become autonomous. And, and if you look at this uh, graphic, which I love the graphic because it talks about, you know, there's different stakeholders actually in every one of those buckets. So each one of those stakeholders uses a different software application today. The industry has exploded. The ecosystem, the contact ecosystem is huge now, right? So you can't expect to control at all. You can't expect to own every application that's out there. And in fact, TopCon's position has always been an open provider of their solutions in the marketplace. And so three years ago, when I was on this stage, I was talking about a, a new venture that we had started at that time called Digital Construction Works. And so today I'm actually here to tell you that TopCon is continuing digital, digital construction works and owns the entire business now, has acquired it since January. So we are on a, on a journey and there, the investment continues. Uh, and what we're doing is if you think about that ecosystem, every one of those stakeholders at the bottom <laughs> are using an application. And those applications today typically connect to some cloud application or some way of, of connecting their, you know, whether it's in the field or the office, uh, to the internet. And it's surprising over those three years that we spent uh, at Digital Construction Works, it's surprising how many manual processes still exist when you're moving data from one application to the next. It's still not as automated as it needs to be. So what does a machine in the field need to worry about? It needs to worry about things like a schedule. Well, a schedule is kind of macro. It actually needs to worry about the task it's going to perform. Right? If you think about a fleet of machines at, at any uh, grading operation, they might have, have a completely different mix of machines than the next guy. So you know, you're tasking those machines based on what you know about your business. So the machine has to know about the task. It also has to know about the surface model. What's it gonna cut to? What's it gonna grade to? How are we gonna put the pavement in? You know, all those things. Those are all digital models or CAD designs that have to be translated into something that the machines can operate with. So now you're dealing with what I need to do, what I'm gonna do as far as the model goes, and then you can start to automate that machine. Now all of a sudden this machine is becoming part of your operation, okay? And every one of those handovers today is fairly manual. What we've been working on is an integrations platform that is gonna automate a lot of those exchanges with a lot of the third parties out there. That's what Digital Construction Works has been highly focused on. So all of a sudden you'll get to a point where the tasks and the models and everything just flow from the data points that are connected to. And there's no more of this uh, manual import, export, and transfer of data. It's all automated through a, through a platform. So think about that. Think about the machines. Think about the technology that, that it is today. It's going to change really fast. And we're, we're partnering with all of the big players in the industry, you name it, uh, uh, to, to bring this reality to, uh, to construction. So I really want you guys to come see us at the booth. I don't want to actually plug the platform here, although I already have. Um, come and see us at the booth. I'd love to actually show you guys what we're talking about because the automation that we're, we're uh, introducing here is truly spectacular. I think at this point we're supposed to mention the, the, uh, the, the 
press kit is at this QR code. Yep. So please make sure you get that. It's going to be sent to you as well. On Tuesday. Yep. So this is, uh, you get the preview yep. by being here personally. Thank you for joining us. So you get a little preview. Right. Now we can uh, take some questions. And uh, as Jason mentioned, we'll take some questions. And if anyone wants any, uh, you know, a one-on-one -on -one in, in the booth uh, with any of us, um, please, you know, see either Brandon or Stacy, and uh, and we'd be happy to bring you in. I know we've got a, a booth tour scheduled on Wednesday, but uh, you know, we can we're going to be there the whole week. Jason and I will be there. So. Any questions from anybody? Yeah. Doreen Gelly, TBW Advisors. I was wondering if you have any examples of the business impact your customers have achieved through using your platform. Oh, wow. Um, it's all over the place. I mean, we've had, you know, we've, we've done testimonial videos uh, that, that say two, three, four times more productive by putting an automation system on a machine. And it really is it, what, what, uh, validates that is the, the fast growth of machine control from starting back in 1999 2000 and, and when we first launched 3d three-dimensional machine control to now it's almost it's almost the, the rule not the exception anymore so easily we can tell people it's two to three times more productive than manual grading and then we're just scratching the surface when it comes to intera interaction with the uh, with the with all the applications, imagine being able to connect into their ERP system for payroll, for scheduling, for you know working with subcontractors for billing purposes. You know, there's all these pieces when you start looking at a construction company, especially the larger ones, and they're using different different things, and then they have to export from this in an Excel file and then bring it over here and put it in, and that's the stuff that the, that uh, DCW is working on. Yeah, when you think about it, the you know. A lot of the technologies that exist out there today operate fine the way they do in their own unique silos. You know, telematics systems reports things about the machines nonstop, right? But it has no knowledge of the project it's on or the operator that's using and all that. So your, your number one investment, which is the equipment that you're out there using, is not really part of your operation. Or tied right. back to your accounting system so for depreciation. So either you're not extracting out the data, like fuel consumption related to tasks that you do, and all you're either not doing it, or you're doing it with a lot of manual extraction from siloed technologies. And that's one of the things we're changing. We're making those dashboards automatically roll up from these disparate systems. Thank you. Yes, sir. So with all of this information, is there any way to measure the contractor's Yeah, so that's a great question and, and it's kind of interesting because one of the things we can show you in the booth is we do have a dashboard for the CO2 footprint based on task, based on machine. And so I think probably now the, the best thing we can do is we can show what we planned for our carbon footprint. Actually in Europe it's becoming a mandatory uh, item in the Netherlands. You have to uh, forecast your carbon fo footprint and if you do and you operate against it, you get credits. Okay, uh, and if you don't, you get penalized. So, you know, in, in that sort of uh, environment, we had to create this actually, uh, this dashboard, so that customers could see the fuel consumption and, and everything that they're doing with their machine as it related to the project, and sometimes even as it relates to those tasks. And straight up telematics won't give that to you because it's not aware of the projects or the tasks. So you have to have that married to a production system as well, for example, like Topcon SiteLink. And then once you marry those two together, you can extract those out and absolutely generate that report. And it also ties back to your scheduling plan, right? What you don't want is you don't want machines having to wait. And they sit there and they just idle, right? They, they want to be on a very tight schedule so that you bring those efficiencies down, which brings your emissions down. And over time, obviously, you can start to predict, right? Yes. So. Okay. Next question. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Noble, we can talk about the adoption that the solar equipment uh, has been popular behind contractors and everything towards it. And you said APM, did we lose this year? Did anything else lose? Oh, 
we, we got a lot of stuff new, but they don't said only talk about two products. So they put that on there. <laughs> um, yes, there's a, a new version of the display software, uh, the MCX platform that, that goes on it. And it's, it's really been exploding as far as adoption and all over the place. I mean, we, we, uh, we had an example was um, septic, people that do septic fields and septic services. And, you know, tried it once and said, wait a minute, I can automate this whole thing. I know where the line's going, I can dig it out. And uh, I think we did a video on that, didn't we? Did, did, is, there a, is there a place where we could send them for? Did that answer your question? Yes. Because the small machines, are, there's so many applications and it's kind of, we're even kind of scratching our head saying, well, yeah, we think we can do that. Let's, let's check it out. As we also have services inside of TopCon where we can provide the 3D modeling services. We acquired a, a company called Dirt Logic a year and a half ago. So again, trying to take a lot of the barrier to entry. Um, I like to say the construction industry is like a pyramid. Okay, at the top of the pyramid, very not small number of firms, but very high skill. But when you get down the pyramid, lots and lots of companies, but lower skill level. So to go to a guy that's maybe an owner operator, you know, he doesn't have an office, he doesn't have a computer where he's generating 3D files that he needs for that, for that project. We can provide those files for him now uh, through a, a, just a, 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 an email or a cloud-based service. So it might be a simple thing as a ball field that they're working on, or you know, it might be a, a small you know, sewer line or a pipeline or something. We can do that digital file, email it directly to the machine. And now he fires it up and he picks it off the machine. So we're adding services in that regard. What else? Yes, sir. Well, it's, it, it, you're, you're seeing it now where all kinds of machines, the, 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 in the early days, really we, had, we automated two machines, a bulldozer and a motor grader, right? And then it went to an excavator. Then it went to drilling machines and paving now. And, and so now we're into the small machines and all kinds of, you, know, you walk the show floor, practically any machine that's there can be automated. And it's a different degrees. It depends on the application and, and what they're doing, whether they need high end or, or simple low end. We're also seeing a resurgence, quite frankly, in old technology like laser based 2D control for uh, like uh, level boxes and, and uh, that kind of stuff. Is that? that when you look at people's activity, is that still quite big on the top market? Subject matter experts. Yeah, so, more big than, more big than yeah. <laughs> so you have like, 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 <laughs> It varies. It, it's amazing how much it varies. So I've talked to, to some that that uh, you know maybe they're you know maybe they're five million a year in revenue or something like that, and they're on the bleeding edge and they're adopting every tool they can, every chance they get because they can see the value and they can see that if they put say you know one person in the office now using a lot of the different tools that are out there, that person can achieve you know what used to take people you know multiple people to to, to produce to even just start to use the technology. So we're now at that point where we're, again, lowering those barriers to entry, making these tools more automated and simpler to use. So that surely will increase the adoption. And I think uh, also generationally things are changing, right? Uh, everybody expects technology nowadays. It's, it's not like it was when Mark and I were young. But uh, you know, it's, um, it, it really is expected. It's funny how you get the young guys out there today and they're just telling you, well, why doesn't it do this? They're just full of ideas. They're constantly hitting me with, you know, can, can we get this to be, you know, automated and this to be automated? So I think there is not an end in sight. I was joking the other day, I think I'm gonna have a job for a long, long time because uh, the stuff that we need to integrate and the stuff that we need to automate in construction is just vast today. It yeah. really is vast. So I, I see it as, obviously it exploded, 
it's all so, starting to kind of normalize where people are adopting them. You're seeing a lot of you know digital time cards. You're seeing you know more people adopting digital scheduling tools and and actually using those tools. And now we can feed back that data back to the schedule so we can get our plan versus actuals right off the machines. So that kind of stuff makes it's it's kind of a sea change in in that, that those technologies. In my opinion, it's a step function. So. And, and you're all, you know, been involved around the construction industry for, for a while, right? That's what you do. You know who our cu customers are. There's, you know, the, the, a lot of the grizzled uh, folks that don't want to change. And I've been in a lot of meetings where they sit there and say, son, I was paving roads before you were born. <laughs> yeah, but but, that, you know, but that's funny. changing. It's funny though, Mark, because like you were talking about the big companies, They've got armies of people yeah. using technologies, you know. So they've been they've been adopting it for years. You know, a lot of the bigger companies have. But now it's coming down to a point, you know, where it's affordable, especially with this, uh, you know, uh, the MC Mobile stuff. You know, now it's affordable for everyone. Well, so and, and, it's going to yeah. really make a shift. And, so. and my point is, that the, the contractors are, you know, from Missouri. They show me. I got to You got to prove it to me. I'm I'm, I'm not just going to, you know roll over and buy because you got a good marketing message right and uh, but once they get it and they see it then it's then they then they're quick quicker to adopt and as Jason said technology is all around us right and so the our, our children are, are been born in this technology generation and there are a lot of companies a lot of construction companies dad is handing that construction company down now and more willing to adopt technology and like I said before, they see the handwriting on the wall. They can't compete unless they get more efficient. They just, they just have to.